In this video, we will see the 8086 bus control signals generated for read and write cycles. This timing diagram shows a read cycle as well as a write cycle and the various clock cycle stages involved and the bus signals also bus signals generated are involved also. We are actually going to break down this big timing diagram into smaller parts which we can understand and then we will analyze the roles of each signals. So before going into that uh, we need to understand the clock signal first. The clock signals for read and write cycle has got identifiable parts. They are T1, T2, T3, T4 and TW. Okay. T1, T2, T3, T4 are all unique states but in case of TW it is a recurring state it can be inserted as many times as possible between T3 and T4. Okay, so that's the speciality. Uh, T1, T2, T3 and T4 have got their own unique roles. T1 is mainly used to indicate an address operation that means an address is either put by the CPU for a read operation or a write operation during T1. Okay, So that's the role of T1. Then what is T2? T2 is a time when the bus is tri-stated to be ready for a read or write operation. Okay, So if you see here, uh, the bus will be tri-stated at T2 so that it can be ready for a read or write operation. Then the role of T3 and T4 is uh, the data transmission role. Data transmission actually is supposed to be uh, starting at T3 and ending by T4. And uh, the data transmission as we know can take uh, a number of clock cycles depending on the device with which the CPU is involved. So the data transmission, variable data transmission rate can be indicated by inserting as many as TWs as required between T3 and T4. Okay, so that is how it is represented. So if you see here, this read cycle is not exactly completed within 1 T3 and T4. It is completed uh, with T3, TW and T4. Okay, it is extended by 1 TW cycle. Alright, so that is the role of TW to indicate variable uh, response devices in read or write cycles. Okay, so we will see the roles of individual signals and uh, how they control the bus operation. Okay, so first we will see address latch enable signal. We know that this signal is used to enable the latches that will that will carry the address information from address data multiplex lines of CPU. Okay, so uh, the ALE signal being active indicates that the current input, current output coming out from the multiplex address data lines of CPU is an address. So as expected, T at T1 cycle, the address is output by the CPU onto the bus lines, right? So at that time, AL is enabled, so the address latches will all be enabled and we will get valid addresses from the address latches. So if you see T1 and T2 of read or write cycles, ALE is supposed to be active, right? Then uh, by the end of T1, ALE will be deactivated and now onwards we are expecting the multiplexed address data lines to serve as data lines. Okay, so by the end of deactivation of ALE, we expect the multiplexed address data lines to behave, behave as data lines alone. Okay, now we will consider the case of S0 to S2. The status bits S0 to S2, right, they appear only in the maximum mode and we know the purpose they will give the various bits in order to control the a to double eight bus controller to generate the various bus signals right so uh, these bits should be active starting from the address cycle itself that is from t1 and they should be active enough so that the a to double eight microcontroller can generate the bus signals required for data transfer okay so uh, at least till the end of t3 s0 and s2 should be active so starting from t1 right up to the end of t3 s0 and s2 signal should be active that's what we can say in the right cycle too okay then we will see the address stat address status signals uh, we know that uh, 8086 uses 20 bit addresses right so the upper four bits that is from a16 to a19 or the upper five bits right a16 to a19 along with bus high enable they will be performing the address duties in cycle t1 then what about the cycles from t2 to t4 what we can see is that from t2 to t4 actually the bus is getting ready for a data transmission not for address operation so now how should that uh, data transmission happen what should be the addressing mode used for the data transmission that is actually indicated using s3 to s7 right we know that s3 to 
S3 S4 combination is used to indicate the base address required for the base index addressing. So uh, that is relevant during the transmission part. All right. So from T2 to T4, S3 to S7 will take up uh, the roles of A6, A16 to A19 and bus high enable. Okay. So A16 to A19 and bus high enable will be active only during T1 and from T2 to T4 or T2 towards the end of the address or uh, towards the end of data transmission, S3 to S7 will be active. Okay. Now we will see the case of the lower address bits right and as expected they will be active only during t1 of a read or write cycle then what will happen to other parts of the cycle we know that these lines are multiplex with data lines right so before the transmission of data these lines will give the give their role to the data lines and by the data transmission part they will be entirely acting as data lines so that's what you are seeing here first initially they were transmitting addressing signals at t1 then towards t2 they are actually changing to a tri-state role then from the starting of t3 or to the end of t3 till the end of t4 they are entirely transmission transmitting data this is what this is what we can see in uh, right cycle 2 then what is the use of ready signal uh, we know that uh, ready signal is given by a device which is ready uh, for a memory operation either read or write operation so initially at t1 and t2 when the cpu is getting ready for a data operation these devices may not be ready but by the starting of t3 maybe the devices will get ready and they will indicate the ready signal okay so the same is indicated in the write cycle 2 now uh, next important signal is data transmit receive now we know that data transmit receive signal is used to indicate the direction of the transceivers or the buffers right so in memory read cycle the direction will be towards the cpu and in write cycle the direction will be away from the cpu so uh, how should this direction be set and when should it be set the direction should be set well before what the address is put into the bus okay so you can see that from t1 itself uh, during the read cycle the read direction is set then in write cycle the write direction is set from t1 itself then uh, this direction has to be constant throughout the entire cycle okay so throughout throughout this read cycle the read direction is constant and throughout this write cycle the write direction is constant okay then data enable you should uh, understand that data enable and this data transmit receive go hand in hand actually uh, data enable signal is enabled only after this data transmit receive gets stabilized okay so we know that data transmit receive will start propagating in the bus from t1 so we will give some time for that or cpu will give some time for that and then the data enable signal is given to the transceivers okay so once our, once the transceivers are active they are actually not confused in which direction they should transmit right because the data transmit receive signal has already been going through them okay so by t2 when data enable is activated or when the transceivers are activated they will actually conduct uh, data either in uh, the direction towards the peripherals or direction towards the cpu okay so that's what we are seeing here from t2 to t4 towards the end of t4 this den is active either in read or write cycles then uh, what about read read signal read signal is active only during read cycle as it is evident right so it will be active towards the time when the read operation happens so it has to be obviously after t2 so read is active during only that time then similarly with the write what happens write will be active only when the address part is addressing part is over and write operation has to be activated okay so it is obviously from t2 towards the end of t4 